You are on air with Janae Honest and Peng Peng Lee with Ambition on Bleak. What we aspire to do is to inspire and motivate you through our unique stories from our gymnastics experiences. We are both NCAA national champions, so we know what it takes to be successful. Yeah, so through the sport of gymnastics, we have learned the importance of balance when it comes to addressing the physical, mental, and emotional sides of life. So what do we do in our podcast to get started? We always start off with a perfect 10 segment. Okay. (laughs) So I did have one from another time, but I actually came up with the new one because... I'm super um, proactive when it comes to this stuff. So my throat has been feeling a little eh, you know, oh, you know yeah. those days when you wake up and your throat just isn't that great and it's the beginning stages of getting sick. So yesterday I was just really proud of myself. I gargled with salt water like plenty of times and then I <laughs> drank tea. I drank tea all day and I drank tea all day today. So um, and I'm feeling better. I think my throat is just, you know, it's on the mend. So, you know, your girl got through all of flu season in the winter without getting sick, so it's not about to get me now. So I'm proud of that. It's not about to get me now. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, flu. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, my perfect 10 moment actually happened today because even though it was a very overwhelming day, I had to stop and think for a, a second because normally I actually call my mom on the phone when I'm stressed out because it's a great way. L.A. traffic sucks. So when you're going from one place to another, it's a great time to call people and get your mind off things. <laughs> but I couldn't do that. And because listen to podcasts. No one was home. What if I was? What if something happened to me? No one was home. No one was picking up their phone. That's a whole new problem. You could yeah. call me or 911. You're at work. 911. Or Jerry's pointing to himself. But Anyway, you have options. You can call other people. It was it was great that I wasn't able to call people because I actually took a step back and took some deep breaths. I had to really focus on one task at a time and not think about too many things. So my perfect 10 moment for today, I started writing things down that I needed to do. But since everything was happening to me while I was driving for some reason, I couldn't write everything down. But when before my meetings that I went to, I wrote everything down so I could get things done one part at a time because I was really thinking about everything all at once this morning because multiple things were happening and I just had to break it down and get one task done at a time and not think about too many things. So I was really proud of myself. That is a massive step for you. Do you know what it takes for her to write stuff down? She don't write things down nor do any of that stuff. Hey, I've been better this year. She just calls her mommy. (laughs) You know what, Jay? (laughs) You want to go? (laughs) If you're in for something special, just turn on the camera. (laughs) I'm about to prepare you for your UFC thing. (laughs) It's okay. I don't know how to fight, so no. It's fine. Janae and I have this really long-lasting relationship. (laughs) Nothing will bring us down. (laughs) But what are we talking in this podcast today? Because you came up with this topic. I sure did. (laughs) Wow. I sure did. (laughs) So today we're going to talk about the cycle of school and sports and the importance of time management, but how this cycle could be a positive one or a negative one. Wow. I just realized that my, my perfect 10 moment really relates to this topic. (laughs) Totally unplanned. (laughs) Wow. It was meant to be then. It was meant to be. I just wanted to start off. So I guess some of you have made Some of you know I started doing more research since we have these topics. I wanted to get more professional, give you more professional answers than just our opinions. So I actually went on mindtools.com and the time management definition that they give, I'm just going to read it out to you. Time management is the process of organizing and planning how to divide your time between specific activities. Wow. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just so if some of you may not know exactly what time management is so that I feel that if you have more knowledge, you have more power. So if you are more knowledgeable about the things that you're um, focusing on, then you'll be able to break it down more easily. Yes, knowledge is power. Great way to put that. I like that a lot. Thank you. (laughs) Um, But I think that, well, for me, time management, I think is just one of the hardest things to master in life. Well, for me personally, but I feel that once you 
really get it down pack. It's a game changer. Because I remember being super young, guys. I was like in fourth grade. And I remember it, this was the first time, I think I was 10. And it was the first time that I stayed up late because I was trying to finish up this book report. And I was up at like 1246. <laughs> what is Sheesh. somebody this age doing up at like midnight? I don't know. But let me tell you, that was the start of procrastination. <laughs> It started at a young age. <laughs> um, so it started there, honestly. And um, I just wanted to talk about this topic because Miss Val, um, the head coach, or I should say the former head coach of uh, UCLA Gymnastics, because she is now retired, happily retired, like we are happily retired from gymnastics. Yes, um, she always talked to the team about how there's this cycle in life and how it can be negative and how it could be positive and what you need to do to make it more positive. Um, so she would always explain how, you know, one decision leads to the next. So let's say you I'm just going to put the setting in college. Let's say you need to study. But, you know, you're all y'all are in the dorms. You know, your friends are there and you just want to stay up a little bit and socialize. I have been in this situation and I know Peng has been in this situation. <laughs> I have really bad FOMO. Yes. So <clears throat> you what decide. Is, yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. FOMO you, is fear of missing out if you don't know. <laughs> fear of missing out. Um, I don't have that much anymore. <laughs> She really doesn't. It's really sad. Uh, I'm always in bed by like 1030. I know. Grandma. <laughs> I am a grandma. Um, but let's say you're like, you know what? I can I can study in a couple hours. And um, you decide to hang out with your friends. And it's already 1130. And then you start studying. Which then you get less sleep. And less sleep means, you know, you're a little more stressed. You're going to be lethargic in the morning. And then you miss breakfast. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a breakfast person. And I need that fuel to at least focus in the morning and to get me up in the morning because let's be real, um, food is what gets me up in the morning because I'm not a morning person. But basically, that one decision to stay up later and to go hang out with your friends leads to getting less sleep and then you don't study as much and you're tired in the morning and then it kind of just cycles into the next day so so we always said the circle of life at the top is sleep and then you have sleep and then school then you mm -hmm. have school then you have gym and then gym and then your social life and then your social life and sleep so if you can picture that in a giant circle that is what we like to call the circle of life so when Janae is talking about time management it's basically balancing all those things and we're talking about gymnastics specifically but we could say you could say um, you're doing another sport or even work mm -hmm. so this is where you're balancing everything but in this scenario it was for uh, college gymnastics and so we would always say if you don't get enough sleep your sleep is going to affect your practice if you don't if your practice doesn't go well and you have to stay extra or you're not keeping up with your body then your school is going to turn out really bad yeah. because then you're focusing in the gym and you're staying too long when your school's really bad you have more homework hence your social life is off because then you don't have time to hang out with friends and or you're hanging out with friends too much so you don't get enough sleep. So it's a whole cycle that's saying everything affects the next thing that happens throughout your day. So when we talk about time management, we're saying to play, organize and plan everything so that you're very well balanced. So not saying to get rid of social life, not saying to get rid of gymnastics. It's always a balance and that's something we really learned in college is to balance everything out. And man, was that hard for me. You explained that was, so well. Because I really, I was trying to imagine the circle of life she would always draw on that whiteboard and I could not do it. I like could not remember mm. what points were in the circle of life. So I'm glad you said that because. You know, I may not write things down, but I have a very vivid imagination. <laughs> She's which a is, photographic memory. I, I think I really do. <laughs> That's no, something I, I wish I had. I think I have a, a slight photographic memory so I can remember things very vividly. But not to, I can't remember writing sometimes, but mm. I can remember blocks of pictures. So I'm, I'm a very visual learner, which is visual why- Visual learner, there we is, go. Yeah, why I don't normally write things down, but because I'm a visual <laughs> learner, it actually helps to write things down of what I need to do, so I see it. And if you look at my planner, it's all colorful, because one color, if it's all one color, I can't I can't remember what's what. <laughs> it's that. That's how my brain works. Multiple highlighters, right? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Not highlighters. No, just different colored pens. Oh, pens. And it's not. And people think I'm doing color coordination. No, it's it's just so it's more colorful and fun for me. <laughs> There's really no. I would switch out my pens like, like throughout the days. Like I wouldn't switch pens in the same set of notes. 
Oh, that's so weird my to me. planner is so colorful. <laughs> it's so amazing. Like I needed to look unison. <laughs> really? I think looking at your notebook would give me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> it, it probably would, Jay. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, what, why are there so many colors? I'm going to show it to you day? after and then see how you oh, feel. Oh man. So um, there are 10 different things that were proven to help time management that I actually also researched. Oh my gosh. From lifehack.org. And I'm just going to name them to you. And Janae, I want you to say what actually... Um, resonates with you or not. Yes. So 10 things to help time management, set goals, prioritize, keep a task list, schedule tasks, schedule tasks, focus on one task at a time, minimize distractions, overcome procrastination. (laughs) Janae, me (laughs) at 10 years old, (laughs) take breaks, say no and delegate tasks. Okay. Um, all of the above. I'm kidding. (laughs) Um, definitely. Let me see. Let me look at your list. Um, Minimize distractions. I'll touch on that. (laughs) Um, Taking breaks. Focusing on one task at a time and prioritizing, I would say, are the main. I don't even. Mm. Did I say four? (laughs) You said four. Okay, those are the main four that I say I would focus on. And it's not like, okay, and the older I got, it's not that. I I feel that my procrastination became more unintentional because Mm. I had so much on my plate. So I would focus on the thing that was due first and then like put the other things later. But that's good. You're prioritizing. Yeah. So that's prioritizing. But I learned that I needed to prioritize things, but also still section them out throughout the day rather than finish this 10 page paper and then start my other 10 page paper. You know what I mean? So, cause right. then it kind of started as, okay, I have two weeks, um, and they're both due <laughs> on the same day and I would focus on my time on one and then it would leave literally no time for the next. I just had a light bulb moment. <laughs> So when at UCLA, what we'd like to do is work backwards. Mm. And that's exactly what Janae is talking about when she said, okay, this is due on this day and something else is due. So what we like to do at UCLA gymnastics is work backwards. And we like to see when everything is due or when the competition was and work backwards from the time, from the amount of time we have in the present. So basically that. That really helped my time management, and I do this all the time. Okay, I have this meeting that day. What can I get done the previous days before so that I have time to set up so I'm not stressed out on that specific day? Right. I totally feel you with that. So um, I think what Peng said is just all about balance because that's what I really had to learn. Rather, So I would have to section off time throughout the day to work on this paper and then work on the second paper, especially when they're all due on the same day because – in college, for some reason, like you have finals week, but sometimes you got two finals on the same day and you have to learn how to study for both. <laughs> or maybe you got all your finals on the same day. That's happened to me before. Um, so that's when you have to learn, OK, they all have the same due date. How am I going to sec- how am I going to um, you know break each apart and equally do both? So that's why taking breaks and also doing one task at a time helped me out. Minimizing distractions, I would put away my phone. Mm-hmm. Um, I like I liked listening to music, but I would like literally put my phone in another room um, and put it on do not disturb because, of course, when I hear a ding, I'm going to be like, "Ooh, who texted me? <laughs> <laughs> Where's my hubby at? <laughs> um, mm, nowhere to be found. <laughs> Wrong ding. <laughs> um, and then distractions as far as food. Uh, so I feel that whenever I try and do something, I always think of other like random things to do, like cleaning and, oh, I'm randomly hungry and I just ate a meal. I don't know why. So I would put snacks around me so I wouldn't get up and (laughs) like break my focus. And also taking breaks, I would set a timer for whether it's like 45 minutes. Um, and then I could take a break, check my phone, you know, do all those things. So those things helped me with time management. Cause like I said, Um, this started at a young age and it was something that I needed to really dial in on and focus to work on making it a skill that would work in my favor rather than, oh my gosh, I have a 10 page paper to write. And I have, um, what was my like record? (laughs) It was like, uh, I'll say like in a day, but, um, I'll say like seven hours. Like I would, yeah. Then you studied? No, like to write a paper. And it you was, spent seven hours writing a paper. Yeah. Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> because, and this was in the beginning of college, maybe freshman and sophomore year. Oh, so you were year. procrastinating. 
No, because I would study and put all my focus onto one prior oh, and think, okay, okay, got okay it. I have a 10 page paper to write. Um, I can write it tonight and then just use the rest of the day tomorrow to finish it. Like that's literally what my mindset would be besides got it. doing it a few weeks prior and then chipping away at it rather than it's a fine. I mean, cause, and then I honestly feel like the English major taught me how to write papers in crunch time. And it was like lengthy papers too. They weren't five right. pages. They were 10. So there were days when I did bust out a whole paper and it was due the same day, but I was still, <laughs> so still got an A and a B. So, you know, wow. Still got great grades. You're cool. <laughs> I couldn't do that. <laughs> I think the, the main thing for me is definitely focusing on one task at a time. And I think what Janae said about distractions as well, putting away your phone is really important too. But if you're having a really hard time putting away your phone and, um, doing these things on your own, ask a friend, call up a buddy, make a little study group and be accountable for each other. That's oh something that my gosh, you took my next point right from me. I love oh, it. Wow. That's literally what That's I would use to <laughs> accountability is really important. <clears throat> yeah. And I think, and, and Time management is a very hard thing to master. I think I haven't even mastered time management yet, and I'm still learning exactly how to. I'm glad you just said that because I feel that. Um, well, because when I'm you still go, working on it, yeah. right? Because when in school, I feel like I've you know I've gotten to, into the rhythm of how to time manage myself. But in the real world, I'm still learning how to time manage myself because since my schedule is very. Um, my schedule isn't as consistent throughout the week. It changes on the daily. Man. So I have to time manage almost daily. <laughs> like uh, the night before I have to time manage. But something that I actually had a really hard time doing in college was saying no. <laughs> I said yes to basically everything. FOMO, guys. FOMO. The f my FOMO is real. It's still real. It's still there. I just am learning to say no. And when something happens, I learn to say, no, I can't do it at this time. Can I get back to you? That's kind of my out now. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the quote that... Um I think this is how you say it. When you say no to something, you're saying yes to yourself. Yeah, but in college, I didn't <laughs> think that because saying yes to the to people was yes to me. <laughs> I wanted to be surrounded by people. Oh my gosh. I totally, that quote really just got me and I'm like, you know what? Yeah, because I'm saying yes to more sleep and yes to more studying. And once <laughs> someone said that quote to me, then I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I don't feel like going out and I was thinking going to late night. Oh my gosh, I'm saying yes to isolation. Yes to <laughs> 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 But that's just me, guys. I, I have learned that I am saying yes to myself now because <laughs> now I am less stressed. Before, if even if I was isolated, <laughs> I was less stressed because I didn't have to pile everything on. And I I would always say yes to a bunch of things and forget about what I said yes to. And then it would stress me out more because people would text me saying, hey, you were supposed to come to this event or, hey, you were supposed to come this networking night. And then I completely forgot because I said yes to so many things. So wow. that was me in college. <laughs> it's It still happens you see now how a different bit. we are, guys. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. She's like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now I got to Now she's got to make a list of all the things she said yes to. Exactly. On top of the busy schedule she has. And that's why I had to prioritize. Mm. Mm, snaps. <laughs> <laughs> I had to prioritize my schedule and see what I actually need to do and work backwards. I think working backwards really helped me because I was able to foresee what I needed to do in that specific day. And then think about all the tasks that I needed to do in that week mm. and figure out what tasks I could do in specific days. Because I could say, I have this day, this whole day off. So I can get maybe going to the DMV, which is definitely a priority because if you don't go, yeah, there that's are a, repercussions there. That's an all day type of thing too. Exactly. You're going to be there for hours. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of something you have to prioritize advance and, a, and ahead of time and something that you don't think is a priority. Yeah. But it really is. So you, it's, it's almost like blocking out time in your schedule to figure out what is most important to you in that week or in that moment in time. Yeah, that's actually something I'm doing more recently since I got my planner. Guys, I love getting my yearly planners every time. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, because they're just so pretty and cute. But um, I've been really good with just planning out my week. And I think of the whole working backwards thing because you think about your week. Okay, when do I have free time? What do I need to get done on these certain days? And there, all my planner says, oh, today's top three. So I prioritize the top three things I definitely need to get done. And then like, 
things to do in the evening, what's going on through, throughout the day. So I think planners are really helpful because they really break it down for you rather than just, you know, keeping a list. But I think just writing them down in general is important. But planners help me because it really separates it really helps you prioritize, you know, I think and hard- plan and work backwards. Yeah. No, I think the hardest thing about sometimes time management is literally taking that first step and just going with it mm-hmm. because it's hard when you see your schedule and sometimes you do get overwhelmed. That's when you really have to take it one step at a time and say, OK, I'm not going to think about the other things. I'm going to give that one task my full undivided attention and then go 100 percent in that, because if you're 80 percent. in it, then that's when you start getting distracted about other things because you're like, I still have this other thing. I still have this to do. But if you really focus and don't worry, you will still have plenty of time. Sometimes it feels like you won't have enough time if you don't multitask. Right. That's definitely how I felt. And then I also think it's important to be realistic because I feel that some of us can be ambitious. (laughs) See what I did there? Yeah, I did. (laughs) I feel that we can be ambitious and like paying how she says yes to everything. And you think you have just unlimited hours in the, in the day, but you don't, but you think you can fulfill everything and please everybody, but you really only have 24 hours in a day and you kind of want to get some sleep up in there. Um, so you have to be realistic on what you want to get done throughout the day and see how you can spread it out in the week. This is something I struggled with too, because this is why I think sometimes I was like, I would think, um, I can write a paper in a day because I have done it before and right. I get ambitious and I'm thinking, okay, I can spend all this time to study for this test because I can, I've written, I've written a paper in a day before. Yeah. So I could totally do that again, rather than breaking it up, spreading it out <laughs> <laughs> and just making my life a little easier because you know, who wants to, I am never doing that again. Honestly, I don't know why I did that to myself more than once. I did it at least three times. Dang. I, I see. That's the one thing I think in college, you see so many people studying in different ways that you almost, I felt pressured to almost abide by how they were studying. Mm. So I could never, I have never pulled an all-nighter. Neither I, have I. I can't do it. I was one of those people who I would get so tired. I can't even think anymore. I get a headache and I just needed sleep. Yeah, so I just I think, fall asleep. If Even if I try and stay up, I would just right. fall asleep. <laughs> so there's actually a certain point in time where personally, I couldn't stay up past a certain amount of time because I couldn't focus. So I actually in college would cut off my studying time at midnight or something. Mm -hmm. So I had a cutoff time of when I would stop doing something because then that gives me enough time to have downtime to breathe and then go to bed. And if I didn't get something done, I would, well, I do this currently, but I probably didn't do this in college. (laughs) I would write it down, write the tasks down that I needed to do the next day Mm -hmm. so that I could then knock it off my list. Checking off lists are like they feel so good so fulfilling it is very fulfilling (laughs) with my new colorful planner (laughs) yeah um yeah I've never pulled an all-nighter either and actually because you that's all you see not all you see but you see a lot of students in college pulling all-nighters and I don't know how people do it and they also know that it's not good for them but they feel it's necessary and if they can do it I personally couldn't and Sonia Mraz who's out out here about to be a doctor I remember I asked her has she ever done an all-nighter because she needs sleep too and she said she's never done it and homegirl is biochem that's a hard major at UCLA too and so it really just depends on how you feel as a person but what I would do is um Cause you know, you know, my procrastination started so early <laughs> or my, <laughs> my time management issues. <laughs> I like how you remember it because no, I, I really remember do. The last time I don't remember the first time I procrastinated. I vividly remember I was like 10. Yeah. It was a book report. I vividly remember <laughs> being at my desk, looking to my right at the um, cable box that had the time and it was 1246. I'm shocked your dad did not get mad at you for but here okay, this here is what go. he would do here we go and this is kind of what I carried on through college so because I can't really do all-nighters I would do a cutoff point because I feel that when you get tired to a certain point you can't focus you're like delusional you're very delusional <laughs> have you and I know everybody has gone through this when you're reading the same sentence over and over the same page same section and it's just not getting in there because yep. you're tired so um what my dad would do um when I was younger just you know when I was living at home he would um say hey go to bed I'm gonna wake you up in the morning and so you can finish it so he would get me up um, early like at 6 a.m. or something so I have an hour 
um, extra to finish. So I get sleep and kind of rest my mind so I could, you know, wake up with a fresh mind and finish my math or whatever I had to do when I was back at home. So I would do the same thing. I would cut it off at a certain point when I'm super tired or lick, lick. (laughs) (laughs) Are you tired, Janae? (laughs) And I would be like, okay, look, we got to go to bed here. Let's do my little night routine. Go to bed, wake up early before practice at this point. Cause you know, school, I did school in the afternoon um, and morning practice. So that's what I would do. I did that too. Mm-hmm. And morning practice. But I also do want to say when you do certain tasks, you know how you pulled in or not pulled out all night. You wrote that 10 page paper and you're yeah. like, Oh, I can do it again another time. Yeah. I do want to touch on that because I think that is very true. <laughs> Once you start something, it's really hard to break that habit. Yeah. And it's almost like getting into a new habit and just think about the tasks that you are doing aren't really relatable to the previous tasks in a way. Yeah. Every task is very different. And if you're actually thinking about your previous task, you're not living a hundred percent in the moment. Hence, you're not putting a hundred percent of your focus onto that task. That's true. And every paper isn't the same. So what if the paper is going to take 10 times longer than the other one? I love how you just give yourself some snaps. <laughs> <laughs> I gave myself some silent snaps. I felt so wise. <laughs> I thought that was a snaps moment. I was surprised you didn't give me a <laughs> silent snap. All oh, right, right, Jay. Now. After these silent snaps, I think we should take a break. Use the silent snaps to cut to the break. <laughs> they can't hear it. <laughs> and we're back to continue this conversation on time management. So, Peng, Jay. I need you to walk me through your day because since this topic relates so much to how your day went today, Mm. how did you manage your time? Because homegirl said she was in business meetings all day. And if you know Pang, she cannot sit down. She's like me. Like we're both busybodies. And oh, but to- you you don't know me when I'm focused. <laughs> I I'm one of those people. If I can put myself in the library for four hours and get like a bunch of stuff done. Um. So yeah. No. I feel that um when it really comes down to it, we both can really focus. But um, you have to be a hundred percent in the moment. You really do, and especially when you're really in back to back meetings or it's just. Like the launch party that we had, literally, I was nonstop from rehab at 6 a.m. to 10.30 when we left the mm-hmm. venue for um, the launch party. And it was just, ooh, and it was funny, too, because we talk about how to deal with stress and how to not get stressed. And <laughs> well, Peng picked me here. up. <laughs> and I literally was like, oh, my God, I am so stressed. This is horrible. <laughs> Like sometimes you got to let it out and say that you're stressed. That's like when I walked in today and I, I, oh my gosh. So I'll walk you through my day. So I was supposed to, I'm supposed to post vlogs and videos every Wednesday at 10 AM. That's kind of my thing. That's Mm -hmm. when I post videos. Okay. My laptop has been giving me so many issues. Life just happens to you. It happens. So I don't finish the vlog yesterday because I had a bunch of things to do. So I get up early at 7 AM. Great. I got up early Finished my vlog, was trying to post it. My It would not post. I posted it three times on my YouTube channel because it kept saying video processing and it never actually posted. Mm. So then I was just having a waiting game of which one would post first <laughs> because it, was, it took two hours to post my videos. It was ridiculous. Technical difficulties. You got you to gotta be prepared for the um, those moments that are just going to hit you hard. Out of nowhere, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. So anyways, I was really stressed out about that, actually. And I was <laughs> thinking about our podcast. How would uh, how would Peng Peng Lee host Am- of Ambition on Fleek tell me <laughs> <laughs> how to deal with this? So I kind of had to accept the fact that it was over time mm-hmm. and say, OK, you know what? I'm going to aim for 11 because it's something I could not control at that point. Yeah. So I was also doing laundry at the same time. And in between laundry, I would um, then go back to my vlog, check on it and see if it was posting. Then I get an email, which was a really important email that I was supposed to answer. Then I got a phone call. I forgot to answer a phone call yesterday and it was all over the place. And I, then I, this is all before one, o- one o'clock. Um, in the afternoon Mm -hmm. because I had to leave at 12 o'clock to go to the meeting at one o'clock. Oh yeah. So this was all in the morning of between 7 a.m. and 12 a.m. It seems like a lot of time, but for some reason it all crunched so quick and I had to eat. So then I was, I did eat, but 
I had to ask my roommate for food <laughs> because <laughs> I had nothing at home. <laughs> but this is kind of all jumbled up together. But then I finally got a call and another email that was important while I was sitting in my car. Before I went into the meeting, I pulled out my agenda because I got there early, pulled out my agenda, wrote down what I had to do and what I needed to remember to do. So that when I go home and when I have time, I can then do the task. Then there were certain things I was just prioritizing because it was in the moment. I had to prioritize my meetings. I had to prioritize my vlog. All the other emails and phone calls were something I didn't have to prioritize and I had to respond. I will get back to you as soon as I can Mm -hmm. because I really could not go from one thing to another. I was going by minute by minute. (laughs) And you know, just some of those days you really work minute by minute. And I feel that when you're super busy, time flies. It really. I bet 1 p.m. came so quick and you were just thinking, what? Yeah. And I was thinking I would have a little bit of time in between my two meetings from 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. And let me guess, you didn't. I had no time. So (laughs) I went from one meeting to the next meeting and I thought I would have time between the second meeting and our podcast, which we're doing now. I didn't. (laughs) So... I nonstop, spent, nonstop, all I, gas, no brakes. Exactly. And I spent the time in the elevator and time when before Janae got into the podcast room to read my emails to make sure that I could respond to it because I knew it was important. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's literally about um, just little things like an email to just do it when those times where you get somewhere early or in between times, not in your car, but say in an elevator or when you're walking in somewhere, just Take, I just was trying to take five minutes to get one task done at a time. You just got to take advantage of those free opportunities you have. Or you can also take advantage of them in a way to just sit down and breathe. You know what I mean? Especially when you've been go, go, go. You need a second. You know That's what I mean? True. So when you do have a second, take it. And you choose whatever you want to do. If you want to work some more or take a breath. But especially when you have those little in-between things you got to do. I had to also remember that... Time, you don't always have time. Time will not always be there. So I also had to remember I'm very thankful that I get today and then I should be happy with having Mm -hmm. today. So I think it went back to because I was so stressed out. I almost had to think and be grateful, sit in my car. Oh, I'm so grateful. Like I get to go to this meeting and I'm grateful that I even have time to um, eat something. But I just had to be thankful for the opportunities that I was getting instead of just stressing over it because it, it, I had it, that was my way of taking a breath was just saying, okay, I'm really actually thankful that I get to be here today and not stress about time. Time's always going to continue. The world's going to move on. So it's not a huge deal if you miss something. Yeah. I think it's also, I think that's really important to go back to gratitude because when you are caught up in the moment and you're super busy, you forget to be grateful for the things that you do have. You know what I mean? So not a lot of people have the opportunities that you have or that you get to take advantage of. So be grateful that you even have a job or that you can do a sport and that you get to wake up early and do the sport that you love. You know what I mean? Cause there are people that wish to be there. There's always going to be someone that wishes to be in the position you are in. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really important. Yeah. yeah and to we, be grateful. And, and cause you know, when you say, Oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. I, you, we try and switch it to say, I get to do this. I get to go to this meeting. I get to, have all these emails and I get to even have a phone. So mm-hmm. it's not about have changing to, that dialogue. And changing you'll the be, dialogue woo. is very, yeah, very important. And you think it's really small and minuscule and it's, it's kind of dumb, but once you say it, it, it changes your mindset a little bit. It's a game changer. And you will be surprised how you look at life differently when you switch your mindset and even just change the word, the wording that you're using. Yeah. So Janae, tell me about, Today or another day where you are stressed out on a day to day life of Janae and how you deal with time. (laughs) I'll take you through I'll take you through the through the launch party. So (laughs) Oh yeah, because that one was that one was nonstop. But usually um when I have rehab, um I wake up This is knee rehab, guys. This is knee rehab. So I usually um try to get there at around six a.m. 615 because you know your girl Um, this is sometimes when I say oh I have to get up really early but this all starts the night before so I do need my sleep and I like to get a very um, a sufficient amount of sleep not just you know oh I can squeeze in five hours like I needed I knew I needed to be very um, 
rested because it was going to be a full day the next day and I wasn't going to be able to take a nap because there was no time to take a nap. So I um, packed everything, um, ate a good dinner, um, planned out my whole day and just what I was going to do, added some extra notes that we like didn't even use <laughs> at the launch party. <laughs> but um, that was just me being... Um, me and wanting to just at least have some structure in what the um, Q&A was uh, going to be. And so I went to bed, got up early, went to rehab, um, did my rehab. And I usually do rehab from six to eight. And then I have to and all of my days are usually I have hard stops um, throughout mm, right. the day. So um, I have to leave UCLA by eight to make it to work by 830 with time up in there to change. Um mm. And then I changed work from eight to five, eight thirty to five. Sorry, um, paying was uh, we decided, and then paying. Okay, she dropped off. We decided to have a nice little outfit change <laughs> while I was at work, and I was like, "Well, paying, I don't have that outfit with me, so you're gonna have to go get it for me." No, I offered to go get it. You for You did offer, but I was like, "I don't have it with me." So um, and I said, hey, "Jay, I can get it for you." And I was like, "Thank you." <laughs> Um, so Peng went to go get that for me. Granted, I don't live super close to her. So that was actually really nice of you to You're do welcome. that. <laughs> so, um, she came by during my lunch break. It's all about taking advantage of those little moments that you have. Um, we reviewed a couple things. She gave me my clothes and we decided that she was going to pick me up after work. Weirdly enough, I forgot that she, I didn't, in my mind, I didn't think we really solidified that point, but we did. So I'm over here about to leave myself and drive myself over. And she says, oh, I'm five minutes away. And I thought, oh, she's driving me. Okay. So I used that time to get dressed really, really quickly. And you, when I got you, you were stressed. I out. was stressed. So um, I only got to look at my notes once. And well, what I happened kind of at like, work? And why, why did you get so stressed? Okay. So um, for some reason, they're just Days are every day is going to be different. And this day specifically, everything was happening in the last hour. And I wanted to leave specifically right at five. That's usually when I want to clock out and go. But for some reason, emails just started coming in and there were things that needed to get done before I needed to go that just popped up. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm not going to get out here at five. And um, our party starts at seven. And that's just less time for us to prepare. And I want this place to be done before guests arrive. I won't even have time to review my notes. Will I even have time to get dressed? I'm wearing the Ambition on Fleek shirt. <laughs> and um, I can't show this shirt to Paul, which was the guy that hosted us at his um, at his uh, cafe. And I'm thinking, well, how am I going to do all this in like five minutes? Literally, these were all the thoughts that were going in my mind. That just took five minutes for you to explain. <laughs> Dang. Exactly. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so... Yeah, Peng picked me up. I'm doing my makeup in the car, literally, because I'm not ready at this point still. And I'm still wanting to review my notes, but I couldn't. Um, and we still <laughs> had to get balloons. We still had to set up and we still had to set out the food and stuff. Um, and then, but the party went really well. Everybody said they enjoyed it. Um, and they said that we were well spoken. And even, and I was kind of dwelling on like, I mean, I, I, want, I was going to ask you how you think I did because I was dwelling on the fact that I felt that I wasn't speaking well I just feel that I'm my biggest critic so yeah I think you are I think that's the thing too when you're under stressful situations you can't be too hard on yourself because there's some things that you can't control and I think I didn't know that you were that frazzled I mean Janae looked like she was on a mission when we got to the cafe she was like placing ornaments everywhere and I'm like <laughs> Jay we have to get these balloons and she's like carrying all these decorations <laughs> in like her one arm and like placing everything and I'm, I'm thinking okay she's Obviously got some strategies to what she's doing. <laughs> she just hasn't voiced it. But I think I didn't know that you um, d you felt crunched for time. And I thought you I thought you spoke very well. Oh, thank you. And then, guys, you know how I love food. If y'all don't know that already, I love eat. food. I did not eat during this whole launch party. That's very strange. So that really gives you a test on just how. I was super excited, but I was also nervous and like stressed because I wanted to be a good host. So how, let me ask you this. If you knew time management stuff that we're talking about now and you were in that same situation at the launch party, would you have done something different? I think I would have, I think I would have reviewed my notes and read them over a few times the night before. Um, mm. and maybe a couple, cause I knew in a nutshell what I wanted to say. I know what our podcast is about. I don't need a second guess that anymore. Even though when people ask me, I'm like, what, what is our podcast about? <laughs> <laughs> 
but um, yeah, so I think I would have done that so I wouldn't have to worry about my notes because granted, it was more of a conversation and right. um, I was thinking in my mind, like Samantha Peshik, she had her notes in front of her when she was speaking and she was giving these announcements and stuff and I've given my senior speech and I had my notes in front of me. So it really just depends mm-hmm. on what works best for you and what kind of speech you're making and in this point or in this situation it was a conversation we were just telling people about our podcast yeah like I really didn't need notes so I think the fact that I was trying to focus on my notes this is something I learned too on a random um challenge we had I do better with speaking when I don't have notes in front of me because I'm not trying to rely on them and trying to follow them you know what I mean I think when you have notes um when you are doing this is going off on a tangent but (laughs) when you're doing presentations and you have notes you're uh taking away and not living in the moment again. Mm -hmm. So you're actually not presenting, which you are giving a presentation. You're actually putting more of your focus on the piece of paper, which is why I think most people do better when they just have little bullet points to go off of. Because then you're able to speak and you're able to allow yourself to give those pointers. But definitely, um, do you think vocalizing how stressed out you were helped? It definitely did. Um, And I think it's important to acknowledge it rather than trying to keep it in. So that's why I said, oh, my gosh, I am so stressed right when I got in the car. She she was vlogging, too. And I was thinking, (laughs) well, this is really positive. (laughs) I said, Janae, don't worry. You don't need to be stressed. I got it. (laughs) She she said it just like that, too. I really did. (laughs) I remember. Oh, I was just saying just my days in a nutshell, Um, just because I do have a full time job. So that time is always set. You know what I mean? I always Mm -hmm. have those eight hours in the day where I have to be at work. But there are days that are less busy than others. So then I can, you know, work on my notes for the podcast and get to my personal emails that are work related. And I'm not I'm not goofing off. You know what I mean? I'm actually doing work all the time. Um so that's another thing that I do. It's just kind of taking advantage. Just take advantage yeah. of the time that you get, honestly. Taking advantage of the small moments you get. I think when when the days become so frazzled and you have so much to do, it's really hard to time manage. But that's when you almost have to take a breather. Think about step by step how you're going to tackle these tasks mm-hmm. and then do them because mm. I think that's what happens when you're frazzled and when things pile on, I panic too. I panic all the time. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, I have so many things to do. Like, how did this happen? How, when, when did this email come in? Why do I have this phone call? Why do I have this meeting all of a sudden? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. time just goes by so fast. But I really, even, I mean, today I was really frazzled, but now thinking back, I, I'm going to try next time. So now you can be accountable with me. <laughs> I'm going to um, take a breather and just take advantage of the times when I, walk to a place or when I'm in my car, listen mm-hmm. to music. That's what I kind of do in the car. I take advantage. I now take advantage of traffic. <laughs> yeah. I take advantage of traffic so much now. Cause if it's going to be there, you might as well. Exactly. I can't change. Sometimes you just don't have control over what is happening and you have to accept it. You only have control over how you react to it. Exactly. <laughs> but one last thing I wanted to touch on is that even regardless of how busy my day is, I take five minutes out of my day, no matter what, because we always have five minutes. Always like we're always on our phones and stuff like that. So I always take um, a second to breathe, um, be grateful for just different things. And I kind of think day to day, like I'll think, oh, I'm super grateful for paying and her being my friend and Aww. doing. The, I'm grateful for this podcast. And it'll just kind of be day to day. But I do things and I'll write down five things or, you know, whatever comes to my mind that I'm grateful for. So I know just how um I need to be thankful every day. And then um, I actually recite and read a poem. It's by Maya Angelou. um, And it's called Phenomenal Woman. So if you guys want to look that up, that's what I read to myself every day. And I take time to do that every day. So it's just to kind of, yeah, decompress, even though it's super busy, but just to kind of remember, you know, why you do the things you do. Or even if you're still figuring it out, that's okay. Um, Because we all have a purpose. Well, I think on that lovely note, I, th- I swear this episode is about to be an hour because we did it. We don't have a hard stop. Yeah, we don't have a hard stop, and I don't remember when we started. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. This episode's about to be an hour for sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Over an hour. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, you know you can always tweet at us at Janae Honest or at Pang Pang C Lee. If you have any comments, um, please reach out to us on social media. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm actually going to be better with responding to you guys. And I think because I'm trying to figure out what's hard for me is 
if we're going to answer that question in an episode or if I should just respond to y'all right then and there. So if I haven't responded to you guys yet, that's why. Because some of those questions are what we're planning to talk about in the future. But yeah, I tweeting, think, sorry, tweeting at me is the best way for me to get a response or commenting on one of my pictures on Instagram because I normally don't look at my DMs. But I will. This girl has like so many. But I will comment on my, um, I will comment back if yeah. you have a question normally. Or my YouTube channel. If you comment on one of my videos on my YouTube channel, the most recent video. She really up on that. I am really up on the YouTube. And so I will definitely comment back if you have a question for us or for me. Comment on one of the Ambition on Fleek episodes or the newest episode that had just come out that week. Mm -hmm. Yay! Yay! Well, that was a, that was a great I like that was a great topic. convo. You know, I actually learned while we were talking. So that's why it was so great. I find that a trend with me. Because it's, it's nice to talk it out and you realize what does go throughout your mind. That's why mm -hmm. talking it out and journaling is so important because y'all don't realize what y'all got in your head it's true. until you write it out or speak it out. True. But remember, as always, to like, comment, share, and subscribe on wherever you listen to your podcasts. And now I feel like I remember the list. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google. <laughs> Wow, that is all memorized because we have no notes in front of us. Yeah, because I've had to say it a few times <laughs> <laughs> to people that always ask me, where can I find it? Where is it? And I'm like, oh, do you use Stitcher? <laughs> all right. I don't even, do we have an outro? I feel like we just kind of talk until they like fade us out with the music. <laughs> and cue music. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, guys. Bye.